Hi guys and welcome to today's video. This was a requested video and I love when you guys ask me for these because I don't know, I, I'm a people pleaser. I, li I like to just do what I like to do but then know that you like it too. If this is also the first time you've ever watched a video of mine, there is a subscribe button down there that would love your attention. I am currently in my second year of uni and these are my A-level binders, folders. Binder is American, we say folders, that's why this has been confusing me. So I'm just gonna do a little tour of how I organized my folders. For any international viewers, it's like the last sort of kind of diploma thing you do before you leave school at 18. I took English literature, biology, and French. Um, also, everyone always stole my notes. It was always, Emma, can I borrow your notes? I was like, yes because they are beautiful. So with that kind of range of subjects, I feel like my folders are, look very different as a result. So I'll show you all of them. So this is my childhood bedroom, if anybody was wondering. You just were sat on top of there. So I keep currently all of my folders down here. This is the pile of them. We will go through them um, by subject, I guess. Also quickly before we get into it, these are two of the books that we did for English A-level. I'm not gonna go through these with you. As you can see, I had like a whole bunch of it and I just like wrote notes like that, I guess. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, that is just how I annotate books. I still annotate them the same way. So I ended up with two for biology, two for French, and then one and two for English. Cause we were writing in those books. Um, that I really didn't need a big English folder by the end of it. So as you can see, I ended up with two different folders for each of my subjects, and that's basically one folder for one subject each year. We're gonna start off with my French folders because I feel like there's the least to them. This was the one that I mainly used. So if we open this, you will see there is just at the top here a lot of um, writing because I think by the end it just was too much. So all of them have these kind of like little drawings at the front. Um, it's just the back of like, the paper you like tear off. Okay, this is 100% my like worst organized folder as you can see in terms of like actually putting things in. Hence, I think this became like an overflow folder. As you can see there's like nothing in here. But the way I ended up organizing this was to do with the papers. So section one is everything to do with um, paper one, which is the oral. Two, paper, reading, listening. Three, writing, usage. Four, topic and text. When you know you're basically learning for an exam, it could be the most efficient way to organize it. This is what I ended up doing in second years because you focus on it a lot more like this in this kind of systematic way. Um, that's why this one is a bit different. This is filed with a G and I was right on here what it is. So this is just general classwork. And you know, it's just, it's just sheets and there's nothing really to it that I can give you in terms of like, how I organize my binder. That will come in biology, I promise. Then I have a G and a V, this is grammar. Ta-da! And this V is gonna be vocab. Lists upon, like, lists upon lists. You can tell, kind of is, to be honest, how I felt about French, is I gave up. Towards the end, I just, you know, completely, completely gave up. The th same theme does not happen in my other folders, and it's kind of reflected in my marks. I have a video of how I'm currently learning French, because at uni I'm still taking it. This other folder is much more soothing, I promise. Ooh, there we go. Here we have a mandatory post-it note. This is so much clearer. Oh, my brain loves this more. Classwork, essays, and exam papers. I couldn't tell you when this is from. Oh, 2014, yeah. This is basically first year work, but doesn't mean shit. These are essays. Oh, uh, this is also all for like how it's marked stuff. I printed off a lot of past papers which is genuinely a really, really good way to learn. That is how this is organized. I would advise you if you like have better ways of doing it to like leave them in the comments because I think organizing a language folder is really hard and there certainly are better ways to do it than what I did. These two are my English folders. This is first years and this is second years. Hence the disparity between the folder sizes comes from in second years we were working inside books um, so the notes are all in there, and this one is just... I have no idea what this is, if I'm really honest. As you can see, it's again with the little sort of drawing at the front. This is actually quite clever that I've done um, in the side here. Every essay title, and I gave myself... well, I put down my mark. This is significantly more coherent. Again, it's organised sort of geared towards um, our exams. We had a prose exam, a drama exam, poetry... These are all then the essays that I wrote and we had an unseen exam. Organising thematically I think is a lot better because what you end up getting given is so like all over the place, whether it's an extract or like 
oh, this is a <laughs> is this a part of a play um, or something you've written um, or something you do in class, like. If you organise it thematically, especially in regards to the way the exam is structured, try and gear the organisation of your folders towards that, because that is when you're going to need it most. So don't leave it all over the place. You have to think that far ahead, because it will honestly help you so, so much. In the drama section, it's everything when we learn about the pastoral, I believe this is. Oh, yeah, that was f fun. As you can see, I use a lot of colour. Like, you won't catch me writing in black ever, because nobody checked Nobody ch ever checks your folders, so it's so much. I just wrote everything in pink. Like the more colourful it was, the better, because I just I can't deal with just having a yellow highlighter. If you watch my more recent like uni thing, you'll, you'll know. I think this summarises how I like, because then you can organise like different things, get like different colours, and it just yeah. There we go. <laughs> Especially when you like if you're if it's poetry, you just need to like sort of tear it apart, and it's a lot better to do with like more fun colours as you can see. So you've got different you know, like different colours mean different things. This section then is just for the essays I ended up submitting. So obviously these are just all typed and marked. And then this is my unseen section. So with one of our exams you'd get a piece that you'd yeah never seen before and you'd have to write on it. So um it gives you just a lot of like we got a lot of tips on how to do it and like sheets and like practice stuff. So vouched all lives here in various colours. Behind this folder bit, so like between like my introduction bit and this, I usually keep like more um, general things like if they give you sheets explaining how the exam works or mark schemes or anything that's very general to the subject, I keep it sort of in between that bit so I just know where it is and it's not going to get lost forever in the rest of my folders. This is like one of my favourite folders of video and it actually has my school crest on it. These ones, all of these folders by the way come from the school shop, so that's why one of them has a crest in it. Uh, this is my favourite like drawing, so I organised this one, as I said, by the text that we did. So this is my set text folder and we basically did that in second years. We did Hamlet, Remains of a Day, Chaucer and also Play, which is um, Where's Godot, hence the, yeah, I thought it was funny. I mean, I've organised a folder by, so this is the drama that we did, Hamlet and Goddard, Pardoner, Remains of the Day, and then again, Unseen. So again, in here is general things. This is a literary timeline. Oh, if you're doing English. This, this can help a lot. Oh, and I was doing my own. A brief history. Oh, look. Look at the colours. Colours will help. Buy yourself like a multi-pack of colourful highlighters and pens. You, you won't, like, you won't regret it. Okay, with Hamlet, what I've done, I've drawn out all of the characters and kind of like organised them a bit like hierarchically. As you can see, it kind of goes up towards Hamlet. This is incredibly useful if you stick it up on your wall or something. And it's actually a lot of fun to like draw. These are also post-it notes that I had stuck up because I learned all of these quotes off by heart. I managed to do all of them, it was so, 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 so stressful, but worth the, worth the effort. Also, if I ever got, like, a message from my friends, like, a post in it, I just kind of left it, because I just, I don't know, I think they're really cute. So this is just, like, anything we have to do with Hamlet, whether it was, like, extracts, or, like, work, or, <laughs> can I just, <laughs> weird, um... Even essays I wrote, essays I hand wrote, they all then live in their section. I did exactly the same for Godot. Um, and because Godot has an incredibly, like, limited cast, I actually wrote down a couple others from different plays that I could also, like, use it to compare with. By the way, the film of this is freaking amazing. High key recommend. Albie is, like, really good, but then seeing Martha and George be Liz Taylor and Richard Burton opposite each other, amazing. And again, here are the quotes that I learned from Godot. Don't learn quotes from Godot, you'll go kind of insane. <laughs> oh, I also bought a study guide for most of these. Do, like, honestly, do yourself a favour, buy yourself, like, a small study guide. Read it, highlight, you come up with some fantastic crap. Again, all of the colours, all of the time, all of the shit handwriting. Ta! Ooh, what's this? Oh, I want a highlight of this colour. Where, where, where did that go? I mean... That's actually a pretty good summary of Godot, if you've ever done it. Mind maps are also a favourite. This is how I can organise essays really well, if I mind map it, and then I can see logical sort of connections and like conclusions of how you, things work together. Mind mapping isn't for everyone though, I never used to do it because it confused me too much, but it's good to get your ideas out, especially, especially, especially with English. Um, I now do this for all of my essays. Before I start writing it, I will mind map every idea I have, and that's what your essay comes from. I do it differently for exams, um, but for like writing on a text, 
this is really, really useful. And then also giving myself some more plain, really simple notes. That is really, really useful as well, so my brain can like digest it better. I like summaries, summaries of different kinds of things, summaries of historical context, summaries of like what I know I need to talk about. Um, this is just a list of uh, the, those kind of words, you know what I mean. Okay, I know that I didn't do this, but someone did. <laughs> So I tried, you know. And then remains of the day, also got a mind map. I don't know why the two plays don't have a mind map. Again, incredibly colourful. Colourful, colourful, colourful. And this is actually, this is my French literature that I had to do. Yeah, so I drew a little character's third Bellamy. Everything that doesn't have a place gets a place of you don't belong here. Oh, and some, uh, yeah, some past papers. That's fun. And finally, where my organisation in life has peaked is my two biology folders. This is first year, so this is all of them, this was an A-level, so this is all of my AS stuff, this is all of my A2 stuff. I freaking love these folders! My younger brother um, is planning on taking biology A-level, so like, my plan is actually, one of the reasons I've kept them is to like, kind of gift them to him, being like, you will never find more beautiful notes, and I did well on this exam, you may have them, but I'll want them back. There we go, yeah. There's a flower in this one. I really like sunflowers. That is a, that's a thing. AS Biology. Ta -da 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 -da. First off, the way this course was organized was fantastic. Each number is just a different chapter in the textbook we have, and that's how they taught it to us. So, number one, cell structure. Two, biological molecules. Three, enzymes. You get, you get the idea. Where you can get colour, put it in. It will honestly make it so much less depressing. Our teachers would also sometimes give us this, of like every chapter you have like learning outcomes, what you're supposed to like learn. And that's really nice to stick like in the front of that section. God, it gives me like so much, just feels like you get control over what you're doing. So yeah, biology is the one thing that is not organised by exam. As you can see, I've started with colour, I've started trying to put a little bit of colour here and there. This is a good example from this folder actually, see, if it makes it easier for your eyes to see everything, because biology is so visual, for adding colour to everything, it is a bit more of an effort, I know, but just sort of drawing it out for yourself and just sort of connecting everything, it's kind of the same, sort of a similar principle to having mind maps, but you just you kind of just see everything so much more logically. And then I am aware that I gave up and just started using colours the entire time. I'll have my written note that I, you get at the beginning of the class, and then like as we go on through the subject, like the sub-subject, um, then I add in any worksheets and like any papers that you get later. Also, if you just make your notes really beautiful, you kind of want to look at them, and it's having pride in your own work that kind of encourages you to just go back and look at it. For example, I'm taking far too much joy in this experience right now. But I think it's important because with biology, because you have to sit down and like go over it again and again and again, with a subject like this, it's worth investing that little extra time and effort into how your notes look. So that, you know, you can actually read and understand yourself. And also it's just, it's pretty, it's nice. Like, I'm still hella proud of this. It's been like, two years. And yeah, I need like past papers, I realise they're being, they're being kept at the back of each section. There we go. And yeah, 99% of it is like hole punched and in there. Keep on top of that crap too, because it's so overwhelming if you don't do it, because then you have no idea where shit belongs. Oh my god. God. A2 biology. This was way too satisfying to do and still to look at. Uh -huh. Sharpies, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The numbering continues, but as you can see, it kind of jumps around because this is, um, this is the order that they taught it to us in. They didn't do it chronologically. Ooh, that's where that happened. Ooh, and on the back of here, some revision notes crossed out when I've done flashcards for each chapter. Seriously, chapters, so useful, so useful. I do not miss quadrants at all. Also, this is kind of primarily in second years, then when we got marks back, I didn't do very well on this one. They would go through the mark scheme with us and just let us write everything down. That's really helpful. Keep old like papers, write down everything you did wrong, don't just mark it, so that you can go through and you'll pick up on mistakes you make again and again. Honestly, having multiple colours in your pencil case will really, really help when you're trying to learn the hard stuff, because look at it, like, you just, you need to see the connections between things that like belong together, and colour is the easiest way to do that to yourself. So, there you go, there's, there's res anaerobic respiration. 
yay. So at the back, I seem to have got like a little section for past papers and then also one for revision. When I did past papers, I printed out every single one for every single paper for biology. Um, at the top, what I did, you might want to do this, is I labelled the sequence in which I'd done them and then the mark and then I like sort of staggered them. It's really helpful to like see your progression. This is my revision and what I did right with my revision for biology. First, I wrote it out, I condensed it all to A4 with a lot of colours. And then from A4 sheets, I condensed everything into flashcards and that's then how I ended up learning it. I mean, look at this though, like how would you not want to spend hours and hours looking at this? Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So yeah, this is my very long winded video on how I organised all of my notes for my A-levels. I guess the points I would give you guys mainly as a summary is like, be very colourful, Try and organise with file dividers as logically as you can. Gear how you organise it towards your final exam. Just think about your future self who's going to have to revise all of this. You want to make it accessible to them. Those are like my main three things basically. Colour. Logic. You of the future. That is the end of this presentation. Also, my folder just looked so fantastic um, in my room. Um, some of you may know I, I boarded. So I'll show you some like pictures of that. I'm disgustingly proud of it, um, and it's also in my boarding room, dorm room tour video. I will link that for you down below. So those are my sixth form folders, and I'm actually very, very proud of them, hence why I still have them despite being so deep to uni now. <laughs> I hope this is helpful for any exams that you guys are doing, figuring out how you're going to organise everything, and then trying to stick to it. It's hard. That is why I've done so many of these videos, because I want you to feel less pain than I did. If you have any questions in the comments, maybe I can answer them, maybe you can help one another if you're still like actually doing those exams because obviously I've been out of that system for a few years now. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe and all that jazz and I will see you guys very, very soon. my head and it's making that like really swishy noise. I made the noise before I winked.